there's some typical section issues. Um, these bridges don't have buildups like a normal port deck. So we'll have to go in there and look in our plans and it'll give you a center line of bearing grade and a mid span grade to come up with to take into account the camber in these spans. And it will vary from span to span a lot of times if you've got different length of beams. So we'll need to know that when we start doing our barrier rail. Because all we know, you know, we put barrier rail on these bridges before we put the asphalt or any kind of concrete overlay. So the, the, the barrier rail thickness, or, or not the thickness, the height, varies across the length of these bridges. So we're looking for the minimum span, or the minimum rail height at mid-span, mm -hmm. where it's the shallowest because of the camera. So <clears throat> you'll need to use those grades in the plans that we just saw to get that minimum help, rail height above finished grade. And you'll, you'll be thicker over top of your bent lines. And, and to accommodate that for our, our wearing surface, you know, asphalt will have to be wedged over top of the bents, and then if we have a concrete overlay, <coughs> it'll be thicker over top of our bents. So as you can see here, there's where we're looking for that minimum rail height. And that, that you know, typically I've seen, starting to see a little bit more hand form of these rails. We've only got a couple contractors to do the slip forming. So some of these projects are short timetable to small bridges. I'm seeing contractors start to hand form these things, so um, you'll, you'll need to make sure they adjust these grades out even with their hand forming or if they're setting a string line up for their slip form. So just keep that in mind. Um, for the concrete wearing surface, these are real similar to a board deck. There's a few minor changes that we make. The, we use a double double A concrete mix with 78 inch stone. We use the smaller stone because they're thinner slabs. We want to make sure we get good cover around all the rebar. <clears throat> Same as always, we clean the slab uh, deck surface before we pour. Uh, the big change here is the third bullet point is 12 hours prior. Since we've got a uh, basically a continuous concrete surface out there that's cured out and dry, we need to soak that 12 hours prior and cover it up with white poly to hold that moisture in overnight or through the day, depending on what time your deck pour is going to be. But they need to do this the day before they pour so we can get that concrete saturated that we're going to pour on top of so it don't draw the moisture out of our fresh concrete. Placing and finishing, basically the same. We're going to set a screed up, uh, no different than before. Uh, we still got strength requirements for getting back on it like you do a uh, Regular pour deck, seven days, full strength. Uh, just need to keep in mind, you got camber in these beams. Mid span shallow, over the bents deep. The plans will give you chairs to support your rebar. They're going to give you multiple sizes of chairs, but they're not going to tell you where to put them. Small chairs go into mid span. Tallest chairs go over the bents. Then you got some in between. It's like putting a puzzle together. You have to slide these, shift them around, because we want that mat of steel as uniform as possible. We don't want to look down that edge and it'd be like a roller coaster because they didn't put the chairs in properly. I have seen it before trying to get them graded out. They've had to stack a couple of chairs on top of each other because they didn't have one that's the right size they needed. So it's it's like putting a puzzle together. So just make sure they take the time to get that slab, that steel, in that location, that slab where it's supposed to be. Uh, Screed setup's a little different. You don't have all the build-up grades. You'll have to get the survey party, whoever's doing the surveying, to give you EP grades and center line grades. Use that to set your screed up, to get your depth, to check your uh, depth, uh, your thickness of your wearing surface, check your concrete cover over top of your steel. You'll need to get those surveying. <coughs> Dry run is required. No different. We want to set that up and do it the same way. And as you can see here, you have to, sometimes contracts have to get creative. You've already got your barrier rails a lot of times. Uh, you don't have overhangs, your, your normal setup for your screed rail. Here they've got the sidewalk poured. Uh, they're just running their screed rail on top of that sidewalk. Uh, you may see it on top of the uh, parapet rail. They'll build some little saddles and some angle iron 
put their, their uh, I've seen different methods do that. You may also see I had one that they uh, they submitted the structures to cast in some all thread in the top. We can cut them off, recess them, grab them in. I don't like that method, but it, we did allow it. I'd prefer not to, you know, put anything extra in holes in a, you know, new concrete if we don't have to. But it did work, and we, you know, just have to recess it and grab it. So you'll see different methods there. Uh, here, instead of doing the saddles, I don't have a picture of it, but they run the screed over here and have a little small block out that we'll have to do a hand for later. If we do that, talk to your BCE before you let them do it. We need to make sure this construction joint was definitely out the wheel path. It don't need to be over top of one of the shear keys. And here, when we do this, is another discussion we need to have. You can see all this plywood or uh, wood. <coughs> we need to get them to get some kind of walk board over there where they're not walking on that steel when they're finishing that edge. You got that little small number three mm -hmm. size rebar they're walking on, you know, just in that freshly placed concrete, you know. You know how many people walk up and down outside of that screen during pour to start getting initial set, working that steel. We want to make sure they're walking on something that would get good uh, concrete cover around our steel. Wearing surfaces, we need to make sure, we just we talked about earlier having a problem with the asphalt cracking over top when we pave it. Same thing will happen with concrete. This is over a bent line. Within 12 hours we need to saw or tool that joint in. That concrete is going to crack there. We need to make sure we do this. This is not an option. Um, so make sure they get on it. Really, as soon as they can get out there and do it, I prefer the tooled in method. That way you don't forget about it. You don't come in late. It don't rain on you the next morning. They, they don't show up. Then the time they do come back, it cracks. Once it's cracked, do not try to saw it. It's too late. Leave it alone. <clears throat> Next problem that we have with these bridges, we're seeing a lot of sidewalks on them. Uh, so you got to, uh, there's some challenges in forming that. We don't have overhangs typically, like we do on a normal bridge that you can support forms along. So they've got to uh, figure out a way they're going to tie their forms down. In our plans now, there is a method that, that allows them to cast in ferrules in the outside of these beams. They can run an all thread in there to hold their forms on. But they've got to request that from the precaster to, if they're going to need that. To me, it's a good idea to put them in there unless, you, I mean, unless you're just 100% you're not going to need them. Because if you don't have them in there, it's a pain. We do not want to drill into the side of these beams. I'm going to say that again later. Do not let the contractor drill into these beams. Uh, same thing on the sidewalk. As you see, we went through here and put our spacing in our contraction joints. We missed the joint over the bend. Every bent line, we need to put that, it's on a skew, whatever, even straight. It's going to crack. So, so don't let them forget that. We've had some that's cracked, little small pieces at the end. i seen on final inspection, we got to jackhammer it out and fix it. You know, just depending on how bad it is. We'll, we'll just think ahead, we don't have to worry about it. I got a little bit ahead of myself talking about the uh, inserts, but here's the slide on that. One thing we do allow, if they think ahead, we can grout in all thread in our shear key. You know, we can grind those back out, grout them back in when they're done with them, but we do allow that. But we do not want them drilling in the cord slab itself. So keep that in mind. <clears throat> but the, the false work gets tricky, so uh, they're, you know, if they're going to have every excuse in the book. I need to drill into this thing to hold it in place. No, you don't. You can put a crane mat out there to support that little parapet of the sidewall. You can put an H pile out there with some sandbags. There's all kinds of methods that work. It's just not as easy as drilling that uh, that hole that we're going. Everybody's seen it before. We've got the tie wire and a 16 penny nail driven in there to tighten it up. We do not want to see that. <coughs> So here's some methods of using the all thread in the keyways. As you can see here, they supported it over top of that keyway, bracing out to hold that outside form. Um, it gets tricky, but it's a whole lot easier if they'll use that all thread, that, that ferrule cast in the outside. So just keep that in mind. If you see sidewalk early on in the project, talk with your contractor before he started making these beams. 
you know, you really got to get this early. Look at your plans. Make sure we know how we're going to uh, form that sidewalk in, in the barrier rail. If you go form the barrier rail, it's even harder. Well, it's a whole lot bigger member, a lot more pressure, a lot more loads on that, those forms. The sidewalk's not as bad, but it still gets tricky. Here's what I was talking about. <clears throat> this is the outside of the beam. They took the shortcut, didn't think ahead. They let them drill holes in the side of our beam, put that tie wire in it, 16 penny nail in. We do not want that to happen. We got a perfectly good beam, it's sealed up, gonna be in the weather. We don't want to put any holes in it. Do any damage to it, then we don't have to. All right, any questions?